All right, what's up everyone, it's Matt Morozik. And this will be an intro slash unboxing video to a build I'll be doing. Uh, this is down the road, but I figured I'd do an intro because I haven't done one of these in a very long time. Uh, two years, maybe three years since I've done a Gundam. Uh, I was contacted by uh, someone who asked me if I still did Gundam builds. I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it for the right price. I named my price and he said, okay. <laughs> so here it is. So. Um, this is just the base kit. This is the uh, Bandai Perfect Grade uh, RX-78 uh, Mark II. Um, so this is a used, a pre-built, or used, I guess used is a proper term. Um, it's already been built. Just it's, As far as I can tell, it's even snapped together. Um, if it's been glued together, we're in trouble. But I don't think it's been glued together because i got to take all the armor off because most of the armor, if not all the armor, gets replaced with what's in this box. So this is the, if you're a Gundam person, you know what the, you know, perfect grade, 160th scale. Uh, it's actually a really nice perfect grade kit. Um, I've built, you know, I've snapped one or two of these together in my time, never really painted one, but um, I've snapped a few of them and they're really nice. So um, just to give you a sense of size, if you're not familiar with these guys. Um, so the perfect grade kit, 160th is right at about at the top of the tallest point is right at about 13 and a half inches. So 160 scale, you know, um, roughly double the size of a master grade kit. And being a perfect grade, it just has a bunch of gimmicks like there's a bunch of stuff that opens hatches and stuff like that. But with this conversion kit, none of the hatches are going to matter because it gets turned into this kit, which is. Um, from SMS, um, if you're not sure what that means, a superior modeling hobby store. So SMS was a company that was around for quite a while and I used to have just about every single one of their kits. Um, I still have a few SMS kits, but not very many. But at one time I think I owned, if not all of them, almost all of them. Um, they're not around anymore. I'm not sure where he got this, but it's brand new. I just kind of took the lid off. It's a brand new kit, so I'm not sure where he bought it from. He bought it from a, a, another collector or where. Um, he said he ordered it from Japan. I don't think they're around anymore, but this is their kit number 138, and this is the 160th um, Hayaku Shiki Perfect Grade Conversion Kit. <clears throat> so uh, the original Hayaku Shiki per Perfect Grade Conversion Kit was put out by Neo Grade many 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 years ago and they're no longer around. Pia, the the guy from Neograde is still around but he no longer makes kits. He's still sculpting and stuff, he does one offs, he just did a 148 scale uh, Kshatriya, just insanely huge. He's done a 148 um, Sazabi, basically a scaled up version of the 160 Sazabi with more stuff on it just and he's only doing one offs, he's not making any more kits because this is the prime reason. So this is a recast of a Neo Grade kit. Um, so what SMS is known for is taking garage kits, mo mainly Gundam kits, refining them a little bit, and then making them, you know, then making them their own. But it is technically a recast of a Neo Grade kit um, without having the Neo Grade kit in front of me. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly the the changes they made. Um, I know for one instance they they made the chest come out a little bit more. They resculpted some of the pieces. Typically, what they do is they add more panel lines and stuff to the parts. But um, on this one, they just I think they resculpted some parts, some pieces. But here are the two uh, photos you get of the finished conversion kit. So this will look like this when I'm done. Uh, now the client sent me a um, a reference photo of a build from a from a gun jap. Uh, article that was done years ago, which is actually my favorite build of this kit. So he says he wants it as close to plated as possible, and I'll do my best, but uh, gold plating is, without actually electroplating it is very difficult, so we'll get it pretty damn close though. Um, I'll get some ideas. So uh, you just get two photos in the box. You get some very nice decals. Uh, these are pre-cut, meaning that there's no, there's, um, they have a little edge around them, so you don't have to worry about cutting real close, but these look really nice. They look brand new, so I'm not sure how old this actual kit is. Like this, this, this particular kit right here is because a lot of times if, it, if it's an older kit, the decals will show some age, and these look brand spanking new. So I'm not sure where we got this, but uh, it looks really good. 
Um, the instructions are like this, and these almost look exactly like original Neo-grade instructions. They do a really good job of copying the instructions. Um, if you go with like E2046 or any of those, you know, guys that I don't ever buy from anymore, the instructions are crap. They're really crappy photocopies of a photocopy of a photocopy, and by the time they're done, you can't see anything. Um, so the great thing about Neo-grade um, and SMS is they give you a nice parts layout of all the parts that are in the kit and how many of each part. So like this kit, um, if I can give you a rough estimate, the resin alone, there's 90 different pieces, but many of these pieces have two or four of them. So I would say on average, this is probably a 200 piece, 160 to 200 piece resin conversion kit. That doesn't include the plastic that's used in the perfect grade kit. So, um, yeah, so when you go through here, when you go through instructions, it'll show you what you do. Let me zoom in a little bit, come down, and I'll show you exactly what the steps are to this piece. So, do something real quick so I can see what I'm filming. I always figure my little flip out thing. Okay, so what we have here is step one, <laughs> which is the head. Um, so you can see here that out of the perfect grade kit, all you use the, is the poly cap from the head. That's all you use. Uh, for the skirts, you use the inside of the frame part, this little detail part, and the poly cap, and that's it. Um, for the side skirts, um, again, just the poly cap. For the waist, you use the inner mechanical part, and that's it. Um, so you basically, on these conversion kits, you're throwing away. Um, in some cases, some cases you'll you'll use 10% of the perfect grade kit. Uh, one of my favorite resin kits I've ever built was the uh, G System Shop 172nd High New Conversion, which uses a um, a perfect grade strike Gundam and in that yeah, I think you use 5% of the perfect grade kit and the rest gets thrown away. So um, you're basically using some of the innards to hold the resin. Uh, let's see, this is the shoulders. For the shoulders again you're using part of the frame part <clears throat> here. Uh, it helps my focusing thing is on the focusing area. So you got the two arms here on one page. Uh, again some of the mechanicals Poly cap. You do use the perfect grade hands and the and the cuffs and the, the that part there and the poly cap. I don't think you use any of the armor from the perfect grade kit. It's all resin. Uh, let's see for the feet and the legs. You use a little more of the perfect grade kit. Again, mostly the inner parts. Um, again, here's a foot showing you what she used from the perfect grade kit. And if it's in red, I should tell you if it's in red, that means cut it out. So like this spot right here, that's part of the perfect grade kit. That gets cut off to accommodate the resin. Just that's just the way it's sculpted. So anywhere is red, that has to be cut off the perfect grade kit. Um, let's see what else. So that's the leg. Left leg unit, or leg unit it says. Let's go to... This is the other leg, or this is the upper legs. So again, you can see here what you use as far as the perfect grade kit. Anything in blue is perfect grade. Anything in this tan color is resin. So it's mostly resin. And then where's the, uh... here's the backpack. The backpack is all resin except for these four parts from the perfect grade thrust thrusters. Here's the chest and body. Here's the chest and body. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a dry throat. Again, shows you what you use and what you don't use. Here's the rough instructions, resin parts, injection parts, cutting. <laughs> That's your instructions. <coughs> and then the weapons. So you have like one beam saber and then these two guys, which are again, two types of guns. I'm not sure what they're called. <coughs> I'm gonna drink real quick. So let's look at some resin.
Man, when I opened this box, it was like deja vu to my days, for back from my Gundam days, because one of the best things about buying a resin Gundam kit, or any resin kit of that, is the, fir the smell of the fresh resin. When you first open it, there's a distinct smell to it. It's almost kind of like, it's kind of almost, almost like a drug. It just, it's got this really distinct smell. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like reminiscent of all the days when I had all these Gundam kits. So in here we get a spring. We get some nylon rods for some of the uh, parts that are hinged. And we got some of these IC sockets, um, computer parts for some of the, for the thrusters that go in there. So I'm gonna put the top, the lid over here, just so I can throw stuff in there. So yeah, this looks brand new, like it's never been owned before. Um, so SMS has always produced a very good kit, very good quality. Um, I, I have actually owned this kit, not this one here, but this particular kit three different times and I've sold it every <laughs> every time. <laughs> it's kind of like trading cards. Um, so I'm not gonna take mo and a lot of these parts out of the bags because what they do, is they do a real good job of kind of vacuum, seal, vacuum sealing the parts um, in like groupings that make sense. So um, it, it just, when they're like this, it makes it very easy to do a parts check. So the first step I'll do is I'll do a parts check to make sure all the resin parts are here because if they're not, um, I don't know how you'd get a replacement for SMS because as far as I know, they're no longer around. I'll have to check with my client to see where I got this. But as far as I know, they're no longer around, no longer making kits. So. Um, I've never had an SMS kit that was missing a part, so I don't think I'll have any issues. As long as none of these little bubbles are busted, uh, we should be good. But uh, let's like let's take the head out, for instance, to give you an idea of what this, the quality is of this piece. So here's just the head. And it's really, really sharp. So as I do with all my previous Gundam builds, what I'll do is in the process of cleaning up, I'll go in and I'll rescribe all the panel lines because in order to accommodate all the different layers of priming and painting and sanding that I'll be doing, I need to rescribe those so that when I go do the panel lines, there's something there to panel line. If I didn't do that, those will get filled with um, primer and paint and then we wouldn't have anything to panel line. Turn my exposure down just a little bit. But it's real nice, real sharp. So there's like the head. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And here are some of the leg parts. I can tell you the leg parts because they got these slits in here for the joints so the legs can move. I always get questions. Are these are these posable? This one's pretty posable um, because the way it uses the perfect grade kit, um, you can move the legs, you can move the arms and stuff like that. You know, I always tell people that. I never, when I, was, when I did Gundams, I never, I, I would I would pick a pose for my thing and I would just leave it because after spending hours and hours and hours and hours of painting, it's so easy to scratch it by posing. Um, so I just never mess with them. Uh, let's see what's in here. We have, uh, looks like we got the waist part here. These have always been a little janky to me because these ball joints are typically pretty weak because uh, they're casted really thinly. So, um, what a lot of times I'll do is I'll go ahead and just insert a rod into those just to give them some strength. So I may drill a hole in those and just add a 16th inch brass rod just to give those some some uh, some strength so they don't snap off. Those tend to snap off um, pretty easily. Uh, let's see, we got the some of the leg armors here. Those are looking really good. Uh, like here's an instance where you got to go in and clean up a mold line like there's a pretty good step right here meaning that the the mold was like this and it it slipped a little bit so um, that's got to be that's got to be fixed so that's where um, the work in these come in is the prepping of the resin <clears throat> it's a lot of work <laughs> it's time consuming lots of sanding and priming Typically two rounds of primer and sanding and, and lots of time three three rounds just to get it all ready for paint. But uh, like those both pieces need to be have a little work done on them. Um, and a lot of times you don't know what you have to do until you get them in primer. So, but the details are really sharp. And these really good work, really good quality resin. It's not brittle. 
Uh, it sands easily. Um, yeah, that's looking good. So here's part of the backpack, shoulder armors, uh, like that. skirt, that's the front skirt right there, both front skirts, um, part of the legs. You got some pretty thin resin right here. That's um, also part of the legs. That's part of the back leg armor, like the calf that goes over the calf. Uh, and then the last set of bubble wrap parts. So here you get a kind of sense of the size. Um, like here is, again, I don't like to take these out until I do a parts count because I'll do a parts count and then I'll put them in baggies like this like you can see all the flash here from the casting process that's got to be cleaned up and sanded and smooth but this is like the um, looks like the the left side of the upper torso right here so this is where the arm comes out so it gives you a good sense of the size but yeah I mean, all this flash has got to be cleaned up I have to see if there's like a little nub right here I'm not sure that's supposed to be there I have to look at the instructions the part diagram and yep that's supposed to be there actually goes the part goes in like this this is the top this is the bottom uh, let's see this is oops, sorry pump the camera this is the lower waist this is what pl plugs into the hip joint right there so this will sit in here like that when it's done so again, yeah, this is like, is it posable? It is to an extent. Do I recommend playing with it? No, <laughs> they're not toys. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're finished sculptures when you're done, all painted and stuff. So, so there's that. Let's see. Um, the one thing on these guys is the back parts. These huge, uh, like the backpack. These things are super huge and heavy. So depending on how the weight works on the perfect grade frame, will determine if he leans backwards or not. That's really a kind of a, what you gotta figure out. Uh, I'm gonna look at the instructions real quick to see on the backpack how much of the perfect grade you use. Okay, yeah, like I said, the only parts you use are these four little pieces right here that are for the thrusters. <coughs> for the thrusters, everything else is resin. So it's gonna be a heavy backpack. Gonna wanna pull back on them pretty, he pretty significantly. Um, let's see. Here's the beam saber, not beam saber, the beam rifle. No beam sabers on this guy. And that's without the the uh, the muzzle. So it's a little, it's about that long. And the only other part to this, there's a pipe that comes up here and the handle. So like this part I can tell right now is gonna need quite a bit of cleanup. There's a pretty good mold line that goes through all this detail right here. Um, so that part uh, will need some, some love. But for the most part, the casting on this is excellent. Um, I remember the, and the ones I had, the, the backpack parts needed some work. The mold that slipped in. Slipped in. Slipped. <laughs> slipped in. Yeah, I can same here. Just remember from what I had. Yeah, there's a, there's a step right here, so the mold split. Luckily, it's on this edge. That's easy to clean up. All these panel lines will get rescribed. So you know, come in here. I'm not gonna do it right, a whole lot, but my favorite my favorite scribing tool is the back side of an X-Acto blade, uh, particularly one that's where the tip has been broken off a little bit. It's like the perfect, especially for this scale. It's the perfect scribing tool. See, just like that, I got a rescribe line. See that one. It's got some glue on it. I got like six of these things because I keep losing them. I keep buying more. I go through and I rescribe them all. Oops. And if I slip, then I have to fix it like I just did there. So, yeah. It's been a while since I've done it again. <laughs> it's been several years. So I gotta kind of get back on the wagon. Um, I do have a bunch of Dymo tape if I need it. Um, I don't use it too often. I'm usually pretty good. If I don't try to force it right away, I don't slip. But I'm 
putting too much pressure, so I'm slipping. But yeah, these will all get rescribed. So by the time I get done with paint and primer, there's plenty of room in there for a panel line. Like this one, I this panel line's a little janky, so I'll probably fill that in with some putty and redo it. But yeah. So there you go. Um, intro video to the Haiku Shiki. I think I say that right. I'm not sure if I say it right. Haiku Haiku. Ah crap. How do you say this damn thing? Haiku Haiku Shiki? I'm not gonna fool myself. Yeah. I always say hi Hayaku. Ah, there you go. Hayaku Shiki. I think that's right. Hayaku Shiki. You can tell me I'm saying it wrong. But there you go. So um, this doesn't this, this won't get started for probably four to six weeks. Um, that's kind of my that's my plan because I gotta get um, some of these others, you know, I got a bunch of figure stuff I'm working on right now for clients, but I'm kind of excited about this. I haven't done one of these in a long time and I like this kit. I know and I know it's a good kit, so um, I know what I got I know what I'm getting myself into uh, with this particular piece. Sometimes when you agree to do a kit, you don't know what you're getting into and then a lot of times you may go and say, oh yeah, I'll do it for that much. Then you get it and you realize it's three times the work. So, and sometimes when I get asked to do a piece, no matter what, whether it's a gun gun or a figure or whatever, a lot of times I won't give a quote until I actually see the piece in person, which means you have to ship it to me first. And then I give you a quote. And if you like the quote, then we do it. If you don't like the quote, you have to ship it back to yourself. So, um... Yeah, and a lot of guys don't like to do that, I understand, because you're paying for shipping twice, but that's just to save myself from screwing myself, you know, on agreeing to do something that I, once I get into it takes me a lot more work than anticipated. So, of course, this won't go back into the box as, it, as they ever do. They never go back in the way they, they came out, but that's it for this video. Um, pretty excited about doing it later. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.